Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a video for you that might upset some people. So last Wednesday you saw a vlog of my son and I going to Barnes & Noble to pick up Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. And while I enjoyed most of the story, I kept I kept thinking cartoon, 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 cartoon. And I have some notes in front of me and you'll have to forgive that as I um, am one of those people who just needs numerous, numerous notepads and <laughs> many reminders throughout. So armed with my most romantic earrings, let me just pause real quick so you can get these, take them in in all their glory. Armed with my most romantic earrings, I shall talk about a romance author who, much like the moon itself, my love for has been waning. So let's start at the beginning of this journey. Hating Game came out in 2016. Um, I rated it a five star romance. You'll recall in my vlog me saying this is God tier romance and for me it truly is. Okay. Um, then you have 99% Mine, which arguably, okay, arguably was not anyone's favorite, really. Um, I liked it. I really enjoyed it. Um, but I, I feel like I was the oddity there. And with uh, Second First Impressions, I feel like I'm once again the oddity. I just checked Goodreads really quickly to see what people were saying, and right now, Roughly a week and a day after release date, it still has a 3.89 stars. Most of the people that dislike 99% Mine are okay with this one. And I wonder if this is going to be one of the author's books that is just like you liked one or the other. And while I do not have physical copies of The Hating Game and 99% Mine in front of me right now, just know that I have read them. And for the purposes of this video, I have reread them, or in this case, listened to them. I was not willing to invest um, another week of my life uh, for this video. I'm sorry, I love you, but not that much, okay? So I listened to them both on audio. Uh, so I finished uh, that book, The Second First Impressions, on Saturday, and I went back and I read The Hating Game on Tuesday, and I finished up, no, yes, I read 99% Mine today on Wednesday. Um, so all things, you know, if they go the way that I'm hoping they will, I will be able to edit this video and get it out tomorrow being Thursday. So hopefully that's when you're seeing this video. Um, so a couple things I want to talk about. Hating Game, it seems like the majority of the people that at least I follow and pay attention to, most of them rated it a five star book and I agreed. Well, we have some instances of what I'm going to talk about, what that being exaggerated sort of uh, stereotypes and um, things of that nature and very cartoonish um, writing almost, uh, that element was sort of way, way, way uh, outshined by my love for that book. And then once again in 99% Mine. But we're going to start where this whole video concept uh, starts. So we have Second First Impressions, I gave it three stars. A um, couple things I did appreciate. One, right off the top, her obsessive compulsion was not cured by a man. It wasn't, <laughs> True Love's First Kiss did not cure her of anything, which I really enjoyed because it's, it's very often that um, mental illnesses and, um, you know, anxiety, things like that, um, obsessive compulsion end up being cured by true love. And that's just not real. So um, I did appreciate that Sally Thorne paid special attention and made sure that that was included in there. Um, also, the characters I have on my notes here, the characters seem cartoonish and over-exaggerated. So we had our main character. Did I tell you what this is about? Do you want to know what this is about? This is about a girl named Ruthie who lives and works in a retirement home and the owners who just acquired the place are now coming to do some audits and things like that so she just happens upon the owner's son at a gas station and um, second first impressions because the first impression was not good <laughs> okay so uh, the characters seem really cartoonish when the son and the father, the owner and the owner's son walked into the retirement home, there was just this scene that had me like, like, 
you know in the cartoons when somebody whacks somebody on the head and it like concaves their head I just kept picturing that in my mind it was so it was so cartoonish and that at first didn't really bother me it wasn't until we got farther and farther into it that I realized that we're having stereotypes here so we have the overly good girl and there was a scene that did make me laugh a little bit I will read that to you so they're talking about um, some things and he says your cardigans won't come off there's a cardigan under that cardigan just hundreds of them like boxes of tissue it's a chastity cardigan an enchanted cardigan and it made me laugh um, so I really did appreciate that particular scene but for the most part it was she is such a good girl and it was overplayed and it was overdone and we were told over and over that she's so good she's so good and you know throughout we have this character um, Melody or Mel is it Melody or Melanie I can't remember but she is a temp that is working at the uh, retirement home and we just keep getting her uh, opinion over and over that he's no good for her he's no good for her he's a bad boy he's a bad boy and it was just so over over exaggerated to the point where I didn't believe it anymore and um, I was like will you just shut up already like shut up damn uh, so that was a thing that I experienced and then upon me rereading I started with the hating game and then went into 99% uh, mine which by the way I still appreciate that book a lot but um, I did go ahead and reread those for um, further proof in my head that all of her characters are written very cartoonish. So for example, we have in the Haiti game the brooding boy sitting across from the uh, quirky girl. And all of her couples are sort of mismatched in that way. Um, I like it. I enjoy a good mismatched romance. That's, you know, my thing. The sort of the odd pairing, if you will. Um, but you have the brooding boy across from the quirky girl in the Haiti game. And throughout all three novels, which I'll touch on uh, briefly here and then again when I discuss each one individually, in all three we have the title of them are, they play a significant role and that is actually um, the main theme. So for example, the hating game. Uh, they were playing the hating game, then they were playing the or something game, and then they were playing some other kind of game, the racing game, and, and that was the main theme throughout. There was always a game between them. And um, then moving into 99% Mine, when we have the bad girl and the perfect all-American boy next door. Very uh, sort of mismatched once again, very stereotypical. She's got a nipple piercing, she's, you know, she's cut her hair. One of the patrons at the bar that she works at describes it as a boy's cut or something like that and, and like literally goes in to call her sir. So we have sort of this badass uh, borderline rocker chick who works at a bar and we have the all-American handyman boy next door who, by the way, I'm sorry, but I will say it until the end of the times, 99% mine, like I am 99% obsessed with Tom Valeska too, but that's besides the point. Um, but then we have the 99%, the percent coming into play. Oh, he's 1% mine, he's 2% mine, he's 3% mine, and that's a theme throughout. Um, and then going back to the second first impressions, um, second first impressions is a main theme in the book as well. We have uh, where she is, uh, he's attempting to make a second first impression on Ruthie, he needs to make a second first impression on his sister, he needs to make a second first impression on his dad, and so I appreciate, it's kind of like in a movie when you're watching and you're just like, are they gonna say it, 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 and then they finally say the title of the movie. It was very much like that for me, so I I don't have a problem with those things. It actually brought my enjoyment up, um, which I know is probably not a <laughs> a typical uh, opinion that I have there, and that's fine. I enjoyed it, and that's really all that matters. I mean, in conclusion, we just get like a stereotype of a person, and then you sort of have details filled in and that's what makes a Sally Thorne character and in the hating game I had absolutely no problem with it none at all I loved it I really loved every single second of it and then in 99% mine I loved most of it I gave that one a four star that one was in my opinion less than the hating game and then 
for this one, I ended up giving this one a three star. So once again, slightly less than um, those that came before it. Uh, so I want to talk about a tiny bit. I want to touch on why, in my opinion, it's okay to love an author, one of the author's books, like one of the author's books, not care for an author, and still consider them a auto by author. So, in my opinion, anyway, I'm not I'm not the uh, spokesperson for auto by authors <laughs> in any any <laughs> shape or form. When you have a book like The Hating Game that holds a special place in mine yours and so many other people's hearts um, and then you have a good book after that um, and then they follow it up with a mm, meh book um, or you know in some people's opinions it looks like Hating Game was god tier 99% mine was the flop and then this one is good but regardless whichever order you put them in it is okay to sort of continue to buy because I <laughs> For me, once again, for me anyway, um, I'm going to continue to buy anything that Sally Thorne writes because the feelings I felt with The Hating Game and even with 99% Mine and even with certain parts in, of Second First Impressions, when you have an author that makes you feel these things, even if the overall effect of the book is subpar or mediocre, <laughs> I mean, if you would look at my bookshelf right now, you would see about 20 Stephen King when I've read about two and a half, maybe three. When you find an author that makes you feel things, whether they're subpar things or mediocre or fantastic things, you stick with them. And for me, Sally Thorne is that author. Now, I really feel like... I feel like I hope we can't go any lower, at least my opinion, but you know... I, I don't I don't honestly understand why nobody really liked 99% mine. I don't I don't understand why it wasn't um, everyone's second favorite of these three. But either way, um, that is going to be it for this video. When I first started the idea of this video, I wasn't sure where I was going to go with it. I wasn't sure what I was trying to say with it, and I don't think I made any actual points other than sort of going over my thoughts. Um, but when I completed this book and began my reread of the other two, the only thing I kept thinking was, oh my god, does everyone like this? Is it just me? And I feel like, <laughs> I feel like that's exactly how I felt with 99% mine, but flipped. Oh my god, does everyone not like this? Is it really just me? And it's crazy to me that we can have two books from the same author that are so polarizing but then have that one book that everyone mutually agrees it is fantastic. Um, yeah, those were my thoughts on second first impressions as well as my second first impression of uh, Hating Game and 99% Mine. My god, I'm so punny. I hope that I edit that out. Okay, um, I'm gonna go uh, wash some dishes and make some nachos uh, because it's nacho time. Um, oh, oh wait, is it nacho business oh. <laughs> anyways I'm gonna go I hope that I edit that one out too my god I don't know who I think I am thank you for watching this video if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you like me and would like to see more from me please hit subscribe I would be so happy to have you all right I hope that you are being safe washing your hands taking care of yourselves